10 that should be in here. So there's the 510. I'm going to go back and then on the revenue side, on the income statement, updating the income statement, I put it to the sales account. So if I go into the sales account, we ought to once again have that 510. Now I'm not going to, I'm not dealing with the sales tax or anything, but it would be a similar process with the sales tax because the next step we would assume is we collect the payment. Now, normally if it was a full service system, what you would be doing then is tracking your contacts, right? You'd be looking at your, at your contacts and seeing if they owe you money and then reminding them that they owe you money. You could also track it in the business dropdown and invoices and sort your uh, all invoices, the ones that are awaiting payment. And then when you receive a payment on it, then you would record the payment from the invoice at this point in time. Now note, when you record the payment from the invoice, if you get one payment per invoice, then you can connect it to that individual invoice fairly easily. However, if you have one payment that's being grouped together due to possibly something like a credit card uh, company or something grouping multiple payments together, you might have to collect two of them and deposit them together. If that's the case, then you're going to have to use more of a full service system, most likely, because it's going to be easier to do that kind of grouping from here. Uh, if you also have other deposits that are coming in or other complications like fees or something like that, then you might have to create another checking account, which is a clearing account, so that you can put it into the clearing account and then transfer it from the clearing account into the checking account so that it hits the checking account in the same format as what will be shown on the bank statement that we can reconcile with the use of the bank feeds. So I know that gets kind of uh, messy, but hopefully that'll make more sense in, as we go. So if I hit the drop down here, if I go back into my bank accounts, I'm gonna try to say, well, what if I can just wait till it clears the bank and then connect it to the invoice, right? I can say, all right, what if I go to my reconcile over here, find that payment again, which was on sometime in October, I believe. Uh, October. Okay, I picked up a different one. I think I was looking before at this one, <laughs> but I did it for this one. Here's the 510. So notice zero is actually seeing a match here. So it's matching it to an invoice. It's not matching it to a payment. So this is, this is using that match system a little bit differently than you might think of usually. So remember what we've been doing normally is waiting till something clears the bank and then creating a transaction when it clears the bank. Normally when you're looking at the match, what would, what you would be thinking is I already made a deposit on my end. I did a full service accounting thing, made the deposit, and now I'm matching it to what is here uh, in, in the bank, which means this process would not be recording a new transaction in that case, but rather helping you with a bank reconciliation. In this case, we're matching not to the deposit, but to an invoice. So that means that zero is still gonna have to do this second bit over here, right? So it's still gonna record something. What's it gonna record? It's gonna record the reduction to the accounts receivable and, uh, and the deposit into the checking account, even though we're using a matching function. So again, that method, you could see it in some, it would depend on the accounting system that you're in, but you could see a system where that might work Again, if you're receiving payments that exactly match the amount of the invoice that you're charging and you don't have that grouping kind of problem that, that would be happening. So if I say, okay, let's match that. Then if I go to my balance sheet and I'm gonna say update the balance sheet, accounts receivable should have gone back down because they reduced the accounts receivable when we matched. So now we've got uh, the accounts receivable, had a receive payment form, goes back down. So if I go into the receive payment form, was created from uh, that bank fee transaction, there it is. And we could see the detail tying to our actual invoice. So if I go into my invoice, I can go back to the source document of the invoice. The amount due is now zero. Very cool. All right, back and then back. And then 
we can say the other side, let's go back again, is gonna go into the checking account. So it's gonna go into the checking account. And of course, it deposited that uh, money in the checking account of the 510 somewhere in October, I believe. Let's see, it's getting difficult to locate things here. Receive payment, I believe that's the one. Okay, so so we have a ni nice ability to match there. Now, if I go back and track that internally on the invoice, so let's go back to the first tab and go to the business drop down and look at my invoices. It should have uh, populated this over here. So if I went to the awaiting payments, that one invoice has disappeared because it's now been moved over to the paid item. So the internal tracking looks good. If I go to my contacts and I look at my uh, customers, let's just go to the customers this time. And I look at uh, customer number two, then it has properly recorded the amount here. Here's the invoice. Here's the amount that amount that has been paid on the invoice. Okay, so that you might be able to come up with a system that works like that. Uh, in future presentations, we'll think about, well, what if you had a system where you had to have multiple invoices that are being grouped together by a credit card company or uh, by cash payments that are being lumped together, then you probably won't be able to match the deposit to the invoice, but we'll have to do closer to a full service accounting system. And the matching that you have within the bank feed will not be recording a new transaction possibly if you already made the, the deposit, but rather matching uh, to the deposit helping with the bank with the with the bank reconciliations all right so let's go to the the tab to the right right click and duplicate the tab and just look at our uh trial balance as of now just to see how how neat it is that it's been being created just as we go we're just making stuff out of the ether uh which is just amazing it's just constructing on itself growing like a like a tree like a orange tree or something i don't know why orange but so here's our balance sheet we have our balance sheet information and it stops down here on our uh, retained earnings and then we have of course the income statement accounts just listed one on top of the other matching over here to what we have on our balance sheet accounts uh, that have the subtotals let's go back so i could see this properly if i may so we have over here the debits equal the credits which is the same as saying assets equal liabilities plus equity so assets equal the liabilities plus the equity and then the income statement fits into the equity section and is broken out on an income statement the performance statement giving us the detail of the income statement seven four five nine uh is the seven four five nine whereas on the trial balance we have the retained earnings before the breakout of the added current period performance statement, the income statement, and then we just list the income statements down below it. That's why those two systems are the same, debit, credit, assets equal liabilities plus equity, two ways to say double entry accounting system.